Salve! So, hello, I'm Kanta K, and today we are going to be talking about Latin, uh, declension, cases, and prepositions. So, a bit of uh, grammar here. Alright, so let's start. Okay, so let's say that you are uh, in a Roman uh, time, so you time traveled, um, and, and you're modern human, so you so you have like a smartphone and things like that. And so you time travel to the Roman times. And you see this sentence, which says, Puella, puellam, read it. Okay? And you're wondering what it means. Uh, you know that uh, Puella means girl and read it means sees. But you're not sure what puellam is. That's why you get out your smartphone, you put it in your translator, alright? And then it says something like this. The girl sees the girl. Alright? So, okay, so Prella means the girl, and Prelam also means the girl. How come? Why, why does it have the same translation? Well, that is because they are in different cases okay so they're not different words but they're in like different cases they're not different nouns okay so let's take a look at this english sentence the girl sees the girl in this case the first the girl this this the girl yeah uh or 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 the latin puella is the uh, subject of the sentence because that girl is seeing another girl and so she is doing the action and the second girl this girl that appears uh prelam is the object of the sentence because it is being seen all right so prela is the subject prelam is the object okay that's kind of like the very basic of the cases now in latin there are um six cases Okay, and, and we're going to look at each one of them using some examples. So first of all, let's start with the nominative case. The nominative case is the subject. So we've already discussed that. I'll, put, I'll give another example. The girl watches the gladiators. All right? Ple, sorry, Prela gladiatorem spectat. Okay? So in this case, the girl or Prela is watching. That's why... Uh, it is in the subject and therefore it is in the nominative case. Puella gladiatorem spectat. The girl is watching. All right, let's 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 move on. So the vocative case is the next one. The vocative case, for example, as an example, I can give you this. Girl, what are you doing? Oh, Puella, quid facis? Okay. In this case, the girl is being called or it is being addressed. Uh, and, and this is why it is in the vocative case. And in fact, the Latin verb vocat means he calls or she calls. Okay? Now let's move on. The accusative case, which we also talked about earlier, but I'll give another example. So, the farmer loves the girl. Agricola puelam amat. In this case, the girl is being loved by the farmer and therefore uh, the girl or prela uh, or well, prelam is in the accusative case this is the object we were talked about earlier but anyway uh, let's let's move on so the genitive case the genitive case uh, the boy sees the daughter of the girl puer filiam prelae read it in english we might say the boy see the girl's daughter with an apostrophe s uh, but uh, translated literally it's like the daughter of the girl okay so the genitive case can be translated as of okay uh, so the picture the boy sees the daughter so that's a direct object over here of showing possession of the girl now let's take a look at the dative case which is similar to the accusative case because it is the object of the sentence however it is the indirect object let's see what i mean by this so the farmer gives dinner to the girl agricola genam puelae dat so the dative case can be translated as to or for 
all right so the farmer is giving the dinner the dinner is the direct object okay to the girl or for the girl this is the indirect object all right now the ablative case this is a most complicated uh, case because it has quite a few translation but we will only look at one for now and then after we will look at uh, the rest all right so the boy sees uh, sorry the boy sings with the girl puer puela cantat okay the boy is singing with the girl that uh, that would be in the ablative case anyway let's let's review all of this okay uh, let's refresh it so the nominative case once again it's a subject the one doing the action the vocative case is calling or addressing the one being called or addressed uh, accusative case is the direct object okay the one which is directly receiving the action the genitive case in english is often uh, written with an apostrophe s uh, but it can be translated as of and it often shows possession uh, the dative case is the indirect object and it means like two or four uh, the ablative case I, I said it has a few translations and I gave an example with the translation with but it also has a translation by from and in so next prepositions um, prepositions are words that go before the noun and they're kind of govern the noun uh, they go either before the accusative or the ablative except f uh, there's one exception uh, that goes in both accusative and ablative anyway let's take a look at some of those uh, prepositions from the prepositions that follow the accusative case noun first all right so add is the first one it means two or two words for example puella ad vilam ambulat which means the girl walks two or two words the house next we got in which means in or into uh, this was actually the exception i was talking about it goes in front of the accusative and the ablative but we'll talk about that later so anyway the example Puella in Willam Est, or the girl is in the house. Then we got per, which means through. So Puella per Willam Ambulat, which would be the girl walks through the house. The next one is prope, which means near. For example, Puella prope Willam Est. The girl is near the house. And then trans, which means across. Puella trans vilam ambulat, or the girl walks across the house. And then for the ablative preposition, so the preposition that follow the ablative case, there is a or ab, which means from or by. So for example, Puella a templo curit, which means the girl runs from the temple. Cum, which means with, puer cum puella cantat, the boy sings with the girl. And then de, which means about, uh, puer de puela scribit, which means the boy writes about the girl. Ex, which is out of, puela ex orto festinat, or the girl hurries out of the garden. And then this, the in, which follows the accusative and the ablative. In the ablative case, means in or on, puela in orto est. Or the girl is in the garden. All right, now let's take a look at declensions. So declensions are basically like groups or families of nouns, and there are uh, well, actually there are five. But I'm gonna cover the first three declensions. All right. So the model noun we have been using puella, which means girl, in the dictionary is written uh, like this. So puella. Puellae, okay? So when you want to decline a word, first of all, you need to find a stem, okay? So to, to, to find the stem, you take this and take away the A 
or you take this and take away the AE for the first declension, okay? Um, and then the endings, you can see all the letters that are written in red. So to the stem, which is prel, you add the endings. I'll also say that the first declension is often feminine, but it can also be masculine. Alright, let's take a look at the uh, second declension now. So the second family of uh, nouns. To find the stem, uh, so you got servo servi over here as our example now, which means slave. Okay, uh, you take the US off of that, or you take the I off of that, okay? And then you add the endings which are in red. Also, the second declension in terms of gender is mostly masculine, with some feminine or neuter nouns. What are neuter nouns? We're gonna talk about that. So neuter nouns are nouns that are well, neither masculine nor feminine. For, so, so for example, second declension neuter nouns. Templum, templi. To find a stem, take um off of that or take i off of that. Okay. Um, and, and then you add the ending. Now we got another type of uh, second declension now, okay, which ends in er. To find the stem of this, you take this one and and take out the i, okay. However, the special thing about this noun is for the nominative and vocative singular, you say puer, which is the stem, added nothing. Now for third declension, Rex Regis is a model noun. Rex Regis, so that's a bit similar to Puer Pueri. Uh, to find the stem, take off the IS off of that. So R-E-G is the stem in this case. The nominative and the vocative singular is Rex Rex. So this is completely irregular. But don't worry, the irregular ones will be given in the dictionary. The third declension in terms of gender also has masculine and feminine nouns and some are neuter. So, what are the neuter nouns in third declension? Well, one of the examples of neuter nouns in third declension is nomen nominis, which means name. To find the stem, take the is of the uh, nominis, okay, or this genitive case. And that's pretty much it for the first three declensions. And now you have mastered all the uh, the cases as well and prepositions. So, uh, you can uh, uh, try and learn these declensions as well. and. Anyway, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I actually up up upload some music videos on my channel as well. So hope you like them as well. Just click on that green, the key modes uh, with the drums and microphones and guitars on it. And then you, and then you can watch some other uh, videos as. Anyway, thank you for watching and until next time. See